Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about the CPA exam. Many of you are thinking, but I've already passed the CPA exam. I hope so. But many uh, coming down the pike are about to see a very new exam. So in 2024, the AICPA has indicated that they're going to make some pretty big changes to the CPA exam, and they've put it out for comment a few times. Uh, so this time we're going to actually get down to the blueprint level uh, and what they are expecting students to know when they sit for the CPA exam. So today we're going to look at some of the changes that are coming uh, and what so you're aware of what the newly licensed CPA is expected to be able to do, but two, in order to be able to talk to people about being a CPA and about the expectations. So even if you've been licensed like me for quite some time, it's always important to know what the next generation of skills are going to look like. Uh, and also just to be, uh, you know, part of the profession and, and moving it forward. Also to be able to give feedback uh, if you believe that they might have missed a topic or if there's a topic that's a little bit extraneous. So as we've been talking about, this is part of what we call CPA evolution. Uh, and the goal of this was to obviously maintain the relevance of the CPA uh, credential and really think about how we could align with the needs of the future. And so the CPA evolution model was really multiple phases. Uh, the first phase, they were talking about uh, non-accounting majors being able to, uh, you know, sit for the CPA exam. And we squashed that one real quick. That was not well received by the profession. Uh, and instead, we said, why don't we just make sure that our accounting majors get the education they need to be effective in the future? So much happier with CPA evolution, uh, a much different approach uh, than the original uh first round uh, that we saw come out. And again, this is why they get feedback. I'm always impressed with the AICPA's willingness to put an idea out there and see what we think of it. Uh, and so we were very quick to say, absolutely not. Let's not hand out licenses to people who are not accountants, but let's try to make our accountants have the skills of the future. Uh, and so they've been going through this for some time. They did multiple um, different uh, reviews of what they think a newly licensed CPA should be able to do. Uh, and so what a newly licensed CPA is, is asked to do today is very different from 50 years ago, 40 years ago, even 20 years ago, uh, with the use of technology and the changes in both the accounting and auditing standards as well as the tax world. Uh, and so what are we looking at? Uh, and so they have proposed what they call a core and discipline model. Um, they looked at a lot of models. This is something that uh, they went out and they looked at what engineers do and doctors do and lawyers do and other professions like us that have licensing requirements. Um, and they came back to this model ultimately. Um, and so this is what we call the core plus discipline. It is one CPA license, right? So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if which discipline you choose. Everyone takes accounting, audit and tax, right? That's the core of our profession. And throughout the core, you will see technology, right? So technology is a heavy, heavy focus, data and technology across the board. We know that that's a key, regardless of what you do, really not even as a CPA, but as just a human, right? Technology is a key skill set that you need to be successful. However, after you take your core, you're going to select a discipline. And this is obviously very different from when I sat for the CPA exam, the four sections were the same for everybody. So three sections the same. And then the last section you get to pick and you get to uh, select between business analysis and reporting, uh, information systems and controls, and then tax compliance. So the business analysis and reporting is going to be more on the accounting side. Information systems is more the IT side. And then tax and planning is more of the tax side of the house. And that's where you're going to go a little bit deeper. So everyone has to have the core. You have to have some basics, right? So a high level of knowledge for all those areas. And then the depth gets into when you pick your discipline. Now, everyone gets the same CPA license and you won't know which discipline they selected. Uh, so it's not going to be like a CPA and then discipline uh, on there. Everyone just gets the same license. Uh, and so the goal here for it to be very flexible. So have a really strong core in that accounting, the auditing, the tax and regulation area, and then really develop those skills um, into a particular practice area. So what they do is they do practice analysis, and this is not the first time around. They launched their first practice analysis in 2016, uh, and it was completed, or I guess it was launched in 2014 and completed in 2016, uh, and it was implemented into the CPA exam. Uh, and so they went through this. Uh, they then did another round in 2020 focused on the IT piece in particular and the technology piece on what we're doing. So the goal of practice analysis is to ask, right? They asked a lot of people who supervise newly licensed CPAs, what is it that we expect of them? What are the knowledge and skills that are required for them to be successful? And again, this is all about the public interest, making sure that the 
uh, what we're asking is relevant, right? Is it reliable? Is it legally defensible? Is this what we need our people to be able to do? And again, carries out the Board of Accountancy requirements here. So based on asking a lot of people, they did a big survey, they asked for feedback. Um, they had some feedback on what they were thinking. Uh, so again, they're going to keep the data and technology concepts in all the core and all the disciplines. So even if you don't take the uh, information systems core, you're still going to have information system or IT type items in your either business analysis or your tax uh, selection. So you're not getting out of knowing some basic IT. Again, it's in the core as well. Um, in the ISC and the TCP discipline, this is where there's content that was not originally in the current CPA exam. So a focus on IT and SOC uh, predominantly in that ISC area and then personal financial planning and tax planning in the TCP area. So that was where they had to go and get new content not currently in the exam. And then ESG, originally they had to propose more ESG, um, but what they found out is while ESG is a growing area for the profession, not likely that it's going to be the newly licensed CPAs so who are gonna have a big role there. Uh, their role will be very minimal, so they're gonna keep focus on the SOC side of the house and COSO uh, ERM, but not necessarily um, focused on the CPA exam. And so they put out this blueprint and the blueprint is basically the minimum level of knowledge, right? So what is it that you're gonna to have to be able to do? And this is how we, uh, the CPA uh, candidates know what's on the CPA exam. It's how educators know what to teach in college. And it helps the people who write the CPA exam questions as well as obviously you would think the, the people who also provide the um, you know, study guides and uh, CPA review uh, type items leverage the blueprint to make sure that they are going over that material, uh, whether it's in school or in the CPA review, so that the candidates are comfortable with the material when they sit for the exam. Now, as we said, there are the three core uh, items. So you're gonna see what you would expect. Ethics is the core of the profession for the audit section. So it's gonna cover the keys of ethics and professional responsibilities. It's gonna talk about risk assessment and then linking it to the respective response. It'll talk about further audit procedures and then forming a conclusion. This is one of the areas where, because you have to evaluate evidence, uses the highest thinking skills, right? So we talk about higher order thinking skills. These are the ones that get into analysis. On the far side, obviously we have financial reporting and then select accounts and select transactions. Uh, you know, while that sounds very um, broad, it is because financial reporting is a very broad area. So within each of those areas, they will each break those down even further. Um, then we have the tax section, as you can see here, we still have ethics and professional responsibilities and tax uh, procedure, but also includes a little bit business law, property taxes, individuals, and then entity. Uh, so they kind of get the gamut there. Now everyone will take that exam. Those three exams are required. Then you get to pick from one of the three. So we've got our first one here, which is the business um, analysis and reporting. So this is going to be your business analysis, your technical accounting and reporting, and your state and local government. So um, if you go into this area, this is where we get the state and local government element of it. Um, if you are interested in IT, you would have the information system and data management, security, confidentiality, and privacy, and then those SOC uh, reporting items. And then for tax compliance and planting, planning, you'll notice that planning element is in here, the tax compliance for individuals, entities, and then again, it goes into property transactions, which again, is gonna be the more detailed version. Everyone has to have the basics, but this is where we get into some of the details. And so they are retaining the four hour model. So each section is four hours with a different amount of multiple choice versus task-based simulations. Again, task-based simulations are designed to be a little bit more real life, you work an actual problem. Um, it's not a multiple choice question, so it requires a little bit more thinking. Uh, so there are fewer of them because they take a lot of time, but they make up predominantly 50%. The only exception to that is in the IT area. Um, everything else is 50-50 split in terms of the weighting. Uh, in so the number of CPA or uh, multiple choice questions is much higher, but it's only 50% uh, for the most part, 60% for ISC. But as I was mentioning, we have to think about, well, what level of skill are we asking for? And I think it's kind of interesting that the odd section, again, because you have to evaluate evidence, has the highest of the thinking skills, but it also has relatively uh, interesting uh, mix on the application and the analysis. So it's kind of very well spread. 
Uh, whereas far is a get in when you get into it, the lowest amount of remembering and understanding uh, with a significant portion, the highest portion being in analysis. So we're really trying to make sure that we're not just memorizing, but we're truly understanding this material and we're able to apply it, analyze it, and then ultimately in the audit section, evaluate uh, and make judgments in that scenario. Now there's so much more in here. Obviously we just wanted to give you a nice overview of what's in this proposal, but if you want to deep dive into each of those sections and what's going to be covered and what the expectation is, highly recommend that you take a look at the blueprint. So between uh, now and comments due in September, you have the opportunity to provide feedback to the AICPA to make sure that this is the CPA exam of the future. It is relevant. It is what we need for those newly licensed CPAs. Once they get your feedback in September, October through December, they're going to consider your comments. They're going to look at what, what comes in uh, and make sure that they're getting this right. In December, they plan to approve the final blueprint. Uh, and then in January, they're going to publish it. And again, January 2024, one year later, we're going to launch this new exam. So they need a year to get those questions ready to get the transition. They've already announced if you've sat for a piece of the CPA exam, right? Maybe you sat for FAR already. Do you have to now sit for the new FAR? The answer is no, so long as you have credit and it doesn't expire, then you're good to go. Um, so if you're due FAR or you're doing audit or you're doing reg, you're just going to carry those over to the core. Um, now, if they expire, then you have to take a new core. Uh, if you have passed BEC, you don't have to do a discipline. Um, however, if BEC drops, then you would have to pick a discipline. So again, they have a transition plan. They are ready to go. So hopefully that kept you in touch with what's going on in the profession as a whole. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope to see you in a future blog. Have a great day guys. Bye-bye.